Thank you, Gene. Uh, I'd like to thank the Spine Journal for the recognition and NAS for the opportunity to present this paper. I'd also like to thank all of my co-authors whose expertise and insights helped with the, uh, make this a very high quality study and uh, a successful study. These are our disclosures. None of the disclosures are directly related to the content of this study. So I don't need to tell anybody in this audience that there's a connection between obesity and back pain. And I also don't need to say that each is a major burden on the American health system. Um, what we do know is that the association between obesity and back pain has been clearly demonstrated in a few populations, including a, a few different countries in Europe and in the occupational back pain population in the U.S. But the general population in the U.S. has never really been uh, determined. We also know very recently from a study out of Norway published in Spine this year that um, the association between obesity and back pain it appears to be unidirectional. And that is from a, an 11 year longitudinal study of a, a cohort of Norwegians where they found that new development of obesity during the 11 year follow up caused an increased risk of back pain. However, new onset of back pain during that same period did not increase the risk of obesity. So it looks like the relationship is unidirectional. And the mechanisms that underlie this relationship are poorly understood. And it's speculated it could be due to structural causes, biochemical, inflammatory, or metabolic causes, or possibly behavioral causes that link these two disease processes. Among the possibilities, physical activity is a logical contender. And that's because there's a known inverse relationship between physical activity and obesity and a similar inverse relationship between physical activity and low back pain. So we wanted to, de to determine if this association, uh, physical activity, was a common denominator and a, and a mechanism for this relationship. And, it, it, and before we started on this study, we looked into the research. It's not that others haven't tried to determine this association. Uh, studies have looked at it and have concluded that there is no uh, visible association. However, there's a key advantage to our study that allowed us to observe an association, um, and I'll get to that later. So our purpose was first to determine if obesity is a risk factor in the U.S. population, uh, a risk factor for back pain, also to quantify that association, and then most importantly, to evaluate the role of physical activity in modulating the association. And to do this, we accessed the NHANES data set, which is a publicly available data set it's, off, it's uh, run by the NCHS and funded by the CDC. Uh, NHANES is an ongoing cross-sectional survey that's representative of the U.S. population. And it's a rich data set that includes a questionnaire on each subject, an interview, and an actual physical exam. A uh, physical exam includes some blood testing and, and um, a very rich source of data. Also important to us was that the 2003 and 4 cohort included information about back pain status and also included seven-day activity monitoring as an objective measure of physical activity. So we used this data set of nearly 6,800 subjects to, to investigate our questions. Our primary outcomes included self-report of back pain on the uh, NHANES questionnaire. BMI was determined by physical examination. And physical activity was determined by using accelerometry or continuous activity monitoring for seven days on each subject. And this is where we had a key advantage over previous studies. Studies that looked at this in the past had used self-report of physical activity or proxies for physical activity, such as manual labor jobs versus blue collar jobs. And while these can give you some idea of a person's activity, they're not as granular and precise as continuous monitoring. And just to orient you to physical activity, this chart shows that uh, how a physical activity analysis would look over seven days. And on the y-axis, the activity peaks are separated by activity intensity. And these have been validated against metabolic equivalents and rated in the, in the typical terms of sedentary, light, moderate, and, and vigorous type activities. And we use this type of um, distinction in activities to help look for a relationship between back pain and obesity. So our data set included a large number of patients, and on those patients we had a large amount of data because we had to control for many things that influence physical activity, such as age um, and multiple other variables. 
We also had a huge amount of data because we had seven days of activity data recorded at one minute intervals for each subject for the seven day period. So we had to create custom programs that allowed us to extract and evaluate this information. And then we performed um, multivariate regression in order to determine the predictors of back pain so that we can control for all important predictors and look at independent associations through weighted logistic, logistic regression. So study purpose one, this is, these are our results. To determine if obesity is a risk factor for back pain in the U.S. population, we showed indeed it is. You can see a stepwise increase in back pain risk as weight increases from normal to overweight to obese and to morbidly obese. And our purpose number two is to quantify the observed association. You can see a fourfold overall increased risk from normal weight to morbidly obese. And I'll say that as a form of external validation, this very closely mimics the associations observed in the European uh, population-based studies. Study purpose three was to evaluate the role of physical activity in modul modulating the association. And this, this slide demonstrates our overall model, so we're looking at all subject of all, of all BMIs. And when we looked at the overall model, we found that there are very weak associations between activity and back pain with odds ratios that you see indicated over here. And the greatest predictors were in the vigorous and the moderate activity ranges. So weak prediction in vigorous and moderate activity range. However, when we look within BMI groups and now stratify by BMI, we find that moderate intensity activity and sedentary activity were much stronger predictors of back pain status. And here's some details from that analysis. So in the overweight group, we found that for each population standard deviation increase in the number of minutes in sustained non-sedentary activity, the odds of having back pain decreased by 17%. So to put that in other terms, the mean uh, sustained non-sedentary activity time in this cohort was seven minutes. I'm sorry, it was 114 minutes. So that means a, person, a person's typical time of not being sedentary was this mean, and by increasing that just by seven minutes, they reduced their back pain risk by 17%. In the overweight group, for each population standard deviation increase in moderate activity time, the odds of having back pain decreased by 32%. That is, increasing moderate activity by less than 20 minutes a day in this population reduced back pain by 32%. And in the morbidly obese population, each standard deviation increase in average bout duration of moderate activity from a mean of 1.3 minutes to a mean bout duration of just over two minutes reduced their back pain risk by 38%. So in discussion, the weaknesses of this study are that it's cross-sectional. We can't determine cause and effect. The data set was pre-existing, and it included a, a very simple measure of back pain that didn't allow us to stratify based on severity or type of pain. The strengths are that it was a large data set, nearly 7,000 subjects, and that the survey isn't representative of the U.S. population. So the results apply to any patients that you have if you happen to practice in the U.S. Uh, we also showed the strength of custom programs for analyzing, analyzing large amounts of data. And I think most importantly, we showed that an object, a simple objective measure of, of activity and function in spine disease can be a powerful tool. So we confirmed the inverse relationship between BMI and low back pain in the US population, quanified the association, uh, and demonstrated the power of accelerometry in spine research. And in conclusion, We've demonstrated that modest reductions in sedentary time and increases in moderate intensity activity have greater impact on low, ba low back pain risk in overweight Americans than on the general population. Thank you.